Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time joining, thank you. If you are a new subscriber, a previous subscriber, or you are returning from watching another video on my channel, welcome back. Okay, so if you had just viewed the previous video, I talked about what's going on and why the bumble, excuse me, why the bumblebee quilt has a little bit of a delay working on it. So um, if you haven't seen that, please refer to that about why um, the bumblebee quilt is going to take a little bit more time. But what I would do, excuse me, what I thought I would do is I'd go ahead and get a start on the embroidery blocks of the quilt. And if you have seen the previous videos that I have talked about the bumblebee quilt, this is the bumblebee that I will be doing um, in embroidery um, with the machine. And, and I have talked about the fabrics and the reasons why I've chose um, the particular bumblebees that I have. And if you can see on these particular bumblebees on the fabric, you can see the way the body is. And it's really similar to what these are. Um, I did have some other designs and I just didn't like those. They were more of a regular bee, a honeybee, than what a bumblebee. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. And you can see the really beautiful colors in these fabrics. And this is the fat quarter portion um, or the fat quarter pack that I bought. And um, it has some really beautiful fabrics in it. And again, I'm just kind of updating for those of you that have not seen these yet. And then it's got like a kind of a floral vine kind of fabric. Then the honeycomb. I'm calling this bumblebee. I don't know, um, I don't think bumblebees make honey, but um, I'm calling it the bumblebee quilt. So um, <laughs> I know there's a little bit of discrepancy in that, but um, there is the honeycomb and you can see all the colors. And when I show you the colors that I have um, picked out for the bee when we stitch it out, um, you'll understand that these colors I am pulling from this and I am matching it as close as I can to the photo of the actual um, embroidery design. So with that in mind, I am going to be stitching out on this color and you can see that this color goes really well. It matches the um, one of the colors perfectly in the fabric. And I did purchase this fabric at Walmart. So please refer to the first video. I will link that, that you can see that. Or if you haven't seen that first, please go to that video and it will explain more about that. So what I have done is I have went ahead and hooped a piece of cutaway stabilizer and this is a medium cutaway and I have it um, I need to tighten it just a little bit I didn't fully tighten it yet I do have a piece of stabilizer I'm sorry batting on the back and then I have my 12 by 12 and a half it's actually a 12 and a half by 12 and a half um, piece of fabric and what I'm going to do is I am just floating this piece of stabilizer on this and when I get this tight I am going to fold this so I can get my center line and I'm just getting it close because I will be trimming it up let me go ahead and move this aside for a moment so y'all can see and I'm just finger pressing a, um, a crease in here and that's just so I can find my center line of this particular piece of fabric so when I do put it on my hoop I can get it kind of laid out 
And I don't want to iron this because I don't want this to be really um, set. And I need to look up here for a moment. I have to find my piece that goes inside the hoop. And this is the template that goes inside the hoop so you can mark your center lines and things. So there's that, and I've got a pencil over here off to the side. Okay, so I will tighten this up a little bit more. And I just want to make my stabilizer a little more taut. And I know a lot of people have different ways of doing their stabilizer and just use the technique that works for you and I'm going to tighten this a little more and I just make sure it's, I mean it has a little bit of play in it still which is just fine. Um, I found that works fine on my FAF machine here. And okay, so I have that. Go ahead and make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, so I could cut my batting down, but I want to make sure that I have enough batting for this particular design. And I could have cut it to fit. There's a Luna hair in there. Um, I could have cut it to fit perfectly in there, but I want to make sure that I have enough. So what I'm going to do, I've seen another YouTuber that does machine embroidery do this, so the batting does not walk around on her a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm just pinning the edge of the batting to the stabilizer at the top and it's just going to make sure that it kind of stays in place without moving around a lot for me. Um, with this particular design that I'm doing, I don't want to really stitch a basting box around it unless when I get to the design um, that idea might change. It just depends on if it's going to fit, I will do a, uh, well, let's just, let's just play the basting box by ear. Um, on dense designs, I usually really like to do a basting box. And if you're not familiar with what a basting box is, when we get to the mean machine, I will show you. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am able to kind of pop this in there and the little notches are kind of fitting into the notch on the hoop and I'm just kind of letting that fit into it and I'm just going to take a regular pencil and um, kind of just do a faint mark to where my corners are and that is just so I can place my fabric right on top because I'm going to float my fabric and okay so I'm going to do that one that one that one and let's do that one and you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to um, I am one of those people that I do not like a lot of fabric waste when I do a project so my idea is to make um, make this as easy as possible and without a lot of waste. Um, I am guessing my, uh, forgot the word, the jelly roll strips. Um, I'm going to be doing jelly roll strip blocks and I am guessing that I will be making 12 inch blocks or 12 and a half inch blocks unfinished. And that is what I cut this yellow piece to. So I want to um, be able to 
if I'm going to match that, I want a big enough piece of fabric to start out with. And with the embroidery, that might change. Let's go this way so I can make sure we get that lined up right. So what I'm doing is I finger press that block and I'm taking the corner or the center of it and I am putting it on that center dot and that way I know and those little lines that I got there and this one as well is going to be lined up with those center marks and that is there and when I'm going to adjust the camera and so it is in front of the machine and we will get that all set up okay give me just a couple minutes and I'll be right back okay so I have the camera set up in front of the machine and we have it already calibrated I have my USB stick with my files all brought up and I have mentioned it before on my FAF machine it gives me the ability to see it in file form like this or I can hit a little button here off to the right and it does it in list form I actually like the list form a little bit better because I name my files to what I'm going to be able to memorize them by and for this particular stitch out design it is going to be the B with the yellow flowers so I have that here and I'm going to hit that and on my FAF machine it's a long press to bring the files up and I already know that I want to make the smallest B to start out with because this first B is going to be my test design to determine if I like the colors that I'm going to be using also if I like the size so I'm going to be doing the smallest B um, in these stitch outs there are when you buy a embroidery design it tells you your colors and let me show you all that here so it tells you um, the machine format the color changes your stops the time or I'm sorry the trims and then the thread charts that they used that the designer used but up here it also tells you that this particular B this is a almost a four inch by a six inch B and it has 22,016 stitches in it that is a lot of stitches so I'm gonna start with the smallest one and see if I like that because 22,000 stitches is going to take maybe an hour, hour and a half to stitch out. So you have to make sure that if you're going to be making a project that you're going to be selling and you're going to be doing a lot of stitching, if it's a design that is really dense like this bee is going to be, you have to consider the time that you're going to be putting in to that stitch out. So for this B with 22,000 stitches, the typical going rate when you sell embroidered items is a dollar for every 1,000 stitches. So with 22,000 stitches, this is basically going to be just $22 in one embroidery block. And my idea is to make possibly three different Bs one of each size and then I have a um, bumblebee gnome that I will be stitching out later as well so it could be just a hundred dollars in embroidery itself so a lot of people when you make a quilt and you put them up for sale they ask you well why so expensive Especially if it's a quilt with a lot of embroidery like this is going to have. Um, I am thinking three bees and one gnome or maybe um, three and three. It really depends on the stitch out and how I like them and how I'll be incorporating it into the quilt. So with this particular one, um, this bee 
came in three different sizes. And I write, I write my little notes on here and I print everything out so I can refer to them um, quickly without having to load my computer and look into it. So the medium size B is going to be um, a little over four and a half inches by about seven inches. And it's gonna go jump up to 27,000 stitches. And then the largest B, I'm trying not to hit the camera. Um, the largest B is gonna pop up to um, about five and a quarter inches by eight inches. And it has 32,000, almost 33,000 stitches in there, or almost 32 and a half. Um, so you get a lot of stitching, but I'm hoping that this is really gonna turn out to the way I want it to. So this is what the design looks like, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in color. And give me just a moment. Okay. So this is what the stitch out of the B looks like. And you can see the colors, why I call it B with yellow flowers. And the reason why I chose this B is not only because the stripes in the body of the B are very similar to the stripes on the fabric, but these flowers right here, these ones right here, are really similar to the flower that is on the fabric. Now let me show you a little bit closer and you can kind of see those flowers there and they kind of have that same kind kind of big whoops come on let me go back I don't know why it's not going back okay it's not letting me go back. Give me just a second here. I'm trying to adjust it so you guys can see this a little bit better. Okay. Oh, I switched it over to a different different photo. Okay. So as you can see that those they have like those big kind of floppy petal. And that's what I think that these look like. So I'm hoping to kind of coordinate as much as possible so it'll all look cohesive when completed. Okay. So now that you can see the colors in here, my colors that I have selected, I am going to go and I'm going to select the B and we're gonna load it on screen. And I'm gonna be using a 150 by 150 hoop. So I'm going to change, make sure my hoop, okay. So I have my creative texture hoop is what I'll be using. And I'm hoping that this B will fit in here okay. And we're going to test that first because it might be that the B <laughs> does not fit in the hoop that I've selected. So I'm gonna hit the stitch out. It's gonna tell me attach the hoop. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach my hoop. And I'm gonna move these threads just over just a bit. And I'm going to get that under there. I will fix the fabric in a moment. And this is just, just, this is just testing to make sure that it will fit in this particular hoop. And I'm hoping it will. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to set our threads. Now, the reason why I'm going to go ahead and set the threads is because if it does fit in the hoop, I don't have to come back and set the threads. So, also, if you're familiar that when you print out a design, it shows you your colors on... I'm just kind of winding this thread up so it doesn't make a unraveled mess here. And I just use a low stick um, masking tape on my threads to kind of hold them. Let me grab this here. So it gives you your color chart, like I was mentioning. So it's got your 18 color changes, 19 stops. The trims are 59. And I like to set my machine in auto trim to cut the threads. Um, some people don't like that. And 
I may turn it off for this project. I'm, I'm not sure. We'll get going and then we'll determine. Um, because if there's a lot of thread stops in it, I may want to cut those myself. Because sometimes when, um, if you're familiar with machine embroidery, sometimes as you're stitching along, it won't pick up the bobbin thread and it, it'll start stitching and won't, if it doesn't pick up that bobbin thread, your stitching isn't going to stay in the fabric. Then you have, if it did stitch anything, you have to kind of pull that out and back it to that starting point of that color. Um, so I hope I'm not confusing you guys on that. I just kind of confused myself. Um, so I like to make sure I like to I like to do a test project first. So that's that's where all this test for this first B is going to come out. Um, I want to make sure that the automatic thread cutter will work because sometimes it just leaves that little little tail of thread that doesn't get picked up and doesn't stitch right. Um, I may turn off the thread cutter and we're going to test it a little bit each way because sometimes if you don't trim your threads it will pull across and I've had projects where it tears the stabilizer or gets jammed up underneath of the machine and it's just it's sometimes designs do that um, I've had a couple people from my embroidery uh, my Facebook embroidery groups um, and machine um, quilting groups tell me it just happens sometimes it can be the most perfect designer that did that that embroidery stitch out but their machine may work that way for them but taking that design that was done on that machine and with that software may not work perfectly with your machine so that's why they recommend to always do a test stitch out. And in this case, I'm definitely doing that. Okay, so now for my colors, if you can see here, the first color is a khaki green, but when I showed you the photo of the bee, let me bring that back up to show you all again. The khaki green is actually the yellow flowers. And it might be a green color on there. Let me turn up my brightness a little bit and see what you guys think. I don't think it's green, but I think it's definitely a, a yellow with maybe a very light kind of limey color to I don't know. But I think um, it's just a yellow. So instead of using the khaki green that that particular thread company um, calls that thread, I will be using this one. And this is a, I don't know, I use new bro thread and I use um, sim thread. So I'm not sure if this was a new bro thread or a sim thread spool. Um, this one might be a bro thread. So that is my color and this is 1171 and that one's that. So what I do as you can see that there's a little section down here where you can make some notes. Um, I wrote my color 1171 for the number one thread. Then the next one is their thread number for whatever thread. This is a Sakura thread that they used. And it's Walnut. And then when I looked at the, again, the photo, it was kind of a brown color. And that's kind of like this part of the bee and some of, I believe it was some of the wing. So I'm going to use this color. And I can switch up my colors later if I don't like the color. And that's the great thing about doing your sample stitch out. So it's kind of a more, you can kind of see it's more of a brownie gold color. I do have a brown gold color that I can use, but I think it might be a little too close to the, the flowers that I'm going to use. Um, again, 
doing my test stitch out is going to help me determine what colors I like. Okay, so then our next color, of course, um, is going to be black. So I do have my black. And that is the reason why I'm stitching out on this color of fabric. I was going to stitch the bees out on black so that they would really pop and um, show up really well on that black background. But all the legs of the bee are stitched out in black and I didn't want that to blend into the black fabric. Okay, okay so our next color is going to be a light gray brown. Their color is a light gray brown, but on that is the wings right here, this, this portion of the wings. So I'm going to use this color for that. And I want to stay all in with the color theme of the quilt. I don't want to go way off um, the color chart. So we're trying to kind of match the colors with what's in here and to what is on the design of the bee itself. Okay, and then our next one is going to be a brown color. And the, let me show you your photo again. And the brown are going to be this portion of the wing where you can see this is the lighter color and then this is the definition. And then it is going to be on this wing as well. And you can see those. And then our last color is called, so you, you go down and the next color is going to be down here, which is a chestnut. So you gotta really pay attention on your list of colors because you can see that there's only six colors in this design. So you need to make sure, okay, where's my six color? It's gonna be way down here on color 14, which is chestnut. And in the pattern, or in the bee itself, that color is these details and the stems on the flower. So I'm just gonna use a darker brown, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna pause for a minute and get something to drink, and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I had to get a, <laughs> a little bit of water. Um, now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and see if this will fit the quilt block or the, the hoop that I have set. So in the picture of here on my screen, you can see that it is right up against the edge and it might not stitch that way. If it doesn't, I may have to adjust just the position of the B. And there are ways that you can do that by rotating it and doing it at an angle, which is fine. Being that it's a bumblebee, it'll just be parallel in the quilt block instead of straight. I don't have a problem with that. Um, it'll give a little bit of character to the quilt, I hope. So we're just going to go ahead and um, with the colors selected, I have some bobbins that I am going to make sure I have enough bobbins wound. So um, I will do that in a couple minutes, but let's just go ahead and get started. I am going to go ahead and do as if I edited my colors. We're just gonna go okay, because I'm gonna be following along with my chart on my notes that I wrote. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to pause, thread the machine, and I will be right back. Okay, so I have my machine threaded. You can see that there. I am going to Make sure everything's okay, the fabric looks okay. I'm just floating the fabric. And the reason why we're doing that is so I can see whether or not uh, a basting frame around the block 
is going to be necessary. And the reason why I want to also float it is I don't want hoop burn around on my quilt block. Because this is going to be a really dense quilt block, I don't want to have to pull my fabric really tight in the hoop and um, distort it in any way. And I really like the ease of floating um, embroidery designs if I can get away with it. Okay, so I have my design here and my machine is threaded and this color is very similar to the fabric and that's okay because it's going to be for the floral part and I don't really want to call a, as much attention to the flower than what I do with the bee. So if the floral portion kind of falls back in a little bit, I'm okay with that. Um, it's, we'll just, that's why we're doing a test one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do over here is I am going to push my stitch button. And what that's going to do is that's going to tell me whether the this hoop is accepted. Okay, so that's our next step. Okay, it looks like it's going to be accepted in this hoop size. I am really pleased with that. So now my next step is I'm going to see, I'm going to go ahead and this button here, I know it's really hard to see on the machine, um, but it's a little butterfly that's got a frame stitch line around it. And what that is is the basting block. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit that and it's going to go up here to the top and I'm going to make sure everything is okay. I'm going to hold my thread tail and I'm going to hit my start which is my looks like the play and stop button up here. Okay. And I'm going to Okay, now the great thing is, is it did that, which is perfect. You can see here that it did the stitch, and I am it, it didn't kind of stitch right there, and I'm okay with that because it just did the outline, and that's what I wor was worried about because I didn't want to start my stitching and hit the edge of the hoop, and let's show you on this side. So here is the edge of the hoop. You can see that right there. And here's that stitch line. So it has about a quarter of an inch. So that's going to be just fine as long because it's not going to hit the edge of the hoop. That's going to be fine. So that is one of the great things about doing a uh, basting block and that's I'm happy with that we've got our fabric set now this first color says it is going to take two minutes to stitch out I'm gonna go ahead and let it play and um, I'm not gonna talk while it's while it's playing um, I will try to I know I've said before in my videos about speed up that little segment and I'm gonna really try to do that so in my editing Hopefully, knock on wood, that this next portion, while it's stitching out, you are going to see that sped up. Okay, let's go ahead and hold my thread tail, and we're going to get going. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to cut that little portion, and let's just keep going.
Okay, that really wasn't two minutes. Um, unless that was the fastest two minutes ever. I think the time may be a little bit off with the pattern stitch out and the speed that my machine was stitching at. So now I'm going to go ahead and see if that did it uh, as an auto trim. It did an auto trim. I'm going to go ahead and change my color and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the next color on the machine. I'm going to tilt you a little bit and bring you a little closer. And I'm hoping that that angle is okay. Um, let me pause video and adjust it so it's a little straighter and hopefully we'll be good on that. Okay. Hopefully that angle is a little bit better. With my camera set up, I, it's hard to get a little bit straight on. And I want you to be able to actually see the whole design itself. And this angle kind of does help with that. I hope you guys don't uh, have an issue with this angle. I will try to work on it and get it a little bit better in the future. Okay, so our second color <clears throat> is called walnut in the design and it's a little bit of a darker brown um, on my machine for those colors it shows the color that was the closest that I could get to it and that was the brown that I showed you so we're going to go ahead and start that stitch out let me go ahead and hit play here sorry for my big old hand in the way or hit start, not play. Okay, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to trim that thread tail. Um, I do have my thread snips turned on on my machine, but for some reason it's not cutting them. And it could be just the way that this designer did it. Um, and that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. I will just do my stitches myself, cut my jump lines, things like that. Um, you know what? Let me actually make sure that it is set. I'm going to do that off to the side. Cut jump stitches, yes. Thread snips, yes. And okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and start again. And this says it will take one minute, so I'll just go ahead and let it, let it play. And this is going to stitch out like the center and the edges of the flower. So I can see where the, the darker brown does come in on this. I am just using a white bobbin thread because it is going to be um, between the quilt batting. I am making the quilt blocks for the bees with a layer of batting in them so it'll be um, a little bit more stability. Okay, that was it for that particular color right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and raise my needle. Again, now it is changing to color. So we're gonna go ahead, I'll just go ahead and pull my thread off. And I know, I know a lot of people say, never pull your thread out from the top. I talked to my faff dealer and he says as long as your needle position is raised, it is not going to affect your tension discs as much as everybody says it's going to. So I'm just going to go with what he says and go from there. Okay, so I am going to trim, and again, my big old hand in the way. I like trimming the big long ones. If it's not going to be covered by other stitching in, if it's going to be a thread that'll sh possibly show through, I'm going to go ahead and trim it. Okay, 
make sure my fabric's okay. Our next color is going to be the black. So I'm going to go ahead and get that up on the, ma the machine. And I use my little thread nets on all of my thread. I have had where these particular spools of thread um, unravel on me. So I am... reaching way over the camera and everything to get this threaded. I bought a big uh, industrial thread stand and it can hold two big ho um, cones of thread and I mounted it to my table so it stays in place and it's easier um, to change my threads while I'm working um, and I don't have to reach far behind the machine to get the thread. Okay, let's see. Okay, so and I just like sticking it through the little eye. And let's go ahead and get started on the next color. This one says it's going to take six minutes. So with this one, I might do the little speed up. Um, so we'll just kind of see what happens in editing. I'm gonna go ahead and pause. And again, cut that. And I think what we are going to start stitching is the legs. Go ahead and go. Okay, now that it started, it does say seven minutes. So with editing, we may just speed that up.
I just like clipping these. I'm going to have to clip that one because there is going to be a lot of black stitching over the top of that. So I'm just going to leave it. That said that that was an eight minute stitch out, that went actually very quickly. We are going to raise my needle. And our next color is going to be what they call the light gray brown. And I think what that one is going to do is um, this color here. And that is going to start stitching out the wing. And I'm going to pull my thread through. And I'm going to go ahead and pause and I'm going to go ahead and stitch a bit off camera. We are getting already to the point where this video is going to be long. So I'm going to stitch out the wings and as the wings stitch out, I will stop the video or I'm sorry, I will stop the um, stitching before I progress to the next color and let you see um, what it looks like and we'll go from there. I will see you guys in just a couple minutes. Okay, so the wings had finished stitching out and let me tell you guys, if you could be in love with the design that you haven't even seen completed yet, this would be it for me. I really love already how it's looking just by the wings. The wings look so pretty already and it doesn't even have all the definition in them yet. So we're going to go ahead and continue to the next color which is going to be, let me look on my list. We are going with this one here. And in the list, it is called just a regular brown. Um, let's see. Let me look here. We are on color number five, which is going to be brown. But in the... Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and go with this shade of brown. I could have probably went with the walnut in this color and then the brown in the one that I used for the second one, but it would have been too close to this color and I wanted them to have a little bit of definition. So again, the reason why we are doing a sample stitch out. This color that I'm using is going to be S0103. And I do not know the actual name of this particular color. It is a sim thread color. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to have to cut this one from the top and 
pull from the bottom because I don't think it clipped down here. No, it didn't. It didn't do the... Yeah, it did. Okay, no big deal. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change the next co uh, color. Go ahead and proceed with the next stitch out, and I will come back again to show you progress. We'll be right back. Okay, for that portion, it did not stitch out a lot of definition, but it did do some shading on the wings here. And I know it's a little bit hard to see um, from the camera's perspective. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and progress on, and our next color is... Oh, let's see. I need to see what our next color is. I think it might be the same color. So let me pause just for just a moment and look, and I will be right back. Okay, so I actually got myself a little bit confused on this color. Um, I was looking at the chart, at the color, and I was thinking just progress on to um, the next color, which I had in my lineup. But what it is, is I am just now switching back. You can see um, thread stitch out number six. And it'll have a little um, number on the side of your stitch out in your machine. It'll be um, like one point whatever. And it's going to count down one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to let you keep track of what stitch out you're doing. You're not going to go by this number here. You're going to go by the actual stitch out that you're doing. So we're going to be doing number six now. And it'll tell you number six. So look at what your color number six is on your chart, and it's the khaki green. So my khaki green, again, I'm using my 1157, um, 1171, excuse me, which was the yellow. So now we're, I believe we're going to go and we're going to start stitching out some more flowers. But when I was looking at my thing, my chart, I wasn't following along correctly and I almost put in whoops sorry about that I almost put in the incorrect color so we're going to go ahead and put that back on there and that's a really good lesson to um, kind of learn make sure that when you are adjusting your colors you do make notes and even though I made notes, I kind of forgot about the numbers that correspond on the machine that it is showing me that it's stitch out number six. So I just have to go according to the list of what the stitch out color is, even whether you change them or not. You just look at what color you substituted for that. So... <laughs> I almost messed myself up and thank God I didn't because I am really liking this bee so far and if I like the way everything stitches out that means I won't have to do another one. This, um, this sample one can actually be used in the quilt. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and hit start. This one's going to take three minutes. I'm going to just go ahead and let it play and let you guys watch. and cut that thread tail and this is going to start doing a shadow up in this portion of the wing kind of like a highlight on the wing tips These particular stitches are adding some of the definition that you would see. I'm going to pause that and I am going to cut that so it does not stitch over this piece. I do not want it to stitch that into the... Wing. 
And so far I am really happy with my color choices. Okay, now we're going to start stitching some of the body or at least the... Oh yeah, it is going to stitch some of the body. Okay. So this says it's going to take two minutes. And what one of the things I like about these stitch outs is it's really simplistic. It's not... Um, I thought it was going to be a lot more dense of a stitch out than what it is, but it's actually giving some like almost like a hair kind of def definition to like a, what a bumblebee has. You can see the fuzziness on, of their body. And uh, the set tension of this design is working very well with the um, cutaway stabilizer I chose and with pinning that batting on there. Um, okay, so there's that one. Now our, it's going to have us switch color again to a black. I'm going to go ahead and can you continue doing stitching and it's going to be a long video so I'm trying to make it um, not as long as, as it will be. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and stitch out the next several colors and when I get to down here to this um, 14th color down here where it's the chestnut and we bring in this last shade. I will come back at that time and uh, show you what the stitch out is looking to, like. Okay, we'll see you guys soon. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop back on and let you show or let you see some more of the definition of the wings that it has stitched out. You can see that it has done the edge of the wings. So all up in here and around the wings. And then there's some kind of like veining in the wings as well. And again, I know with the angle of the camera, it's hard to see. But I just wanted to show you guys how it is turning out. That was after stitch color number 10, which was the black again. And now we are going to go back again with the first color I'm using, but which is their khaki green on their color chart. So I'm going to go ahead and re-thread. And truthfully, when you're doing this embroidery work on a embroidery machine, the thing that really takes the longest that I hate is the thread changes. And that is one of the big reasons why I want to get a multi-needle machine because it will stitch things out a little bit faster. And I won't have to stop as often. I'll be able to be a little more productive when I am making things. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start stitching again. This one says it's going to take five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and continue stitching. And then again, when we get to color 14, which will be our dark brown. Um, and that will be introducing the sixth color in their color chart. So I'm going to go ahead and continue stitching. And we will be back when I switch to that color. So um, I have, I'm starting thread color number 11, or thread change number 11, 
and when I get to 14 I will bring you guys back and show you progress. Okay just popping back on again and you can see the flowers that have stitched out. It has done some more definition in the wings. We are starting back up at the top and we only have a few more colors to do. Um, this is the 13th color. Um, the next color will be int or introducing the chestnut brown, which is going to be this one. Um, hopefully I haven't selected a color that is too dark. So um, the color on the machine shows a really dark brown, so that is why I went ahead and selected that one. Um, so after that one, then we have five more color changes and then the bumblebee will be completed. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start this stitch out. It only has one minute. So it's just a little bit of definition here up at the top. And I don't know if it's gonna change too much here at the top. It's just a really small stitch out. It's doing a little bit more definition here on the side. I think it might be the top stripe of the B as well. Okay, so that is it. I am going to switch to our color 14, which is the chestnut. We'll be introducing the sixth color, which is this one. I'm going to take a break before I thread the machine on this, and I am going to take off the hoop um, just to look at my bobbin. Um, we can go ahead and do that together here. Um, let me see. I'm going to trim the thread that didn't cut on the back. And okay, yeah, it's looking it's looking fine. I'm going to go ahead and I still have about um, a third of the bobbin left. And I think we are going to be able to complete the entire stitch out with one bobbin. I'm going to go ahead and pop this back on. We'll go ahead and change to our 14th color. But before I do that, I see here a thread I want to cut. And I'm sorry, you guys may be a little close, too close now. And I'm, I I'm, hope my voice hasn't been really super blaring loud um, throughout this video because I am right on top of the camera. Okay, so I am I'm winding this last thread color up. We're going to switch to that dark chestnut brown. And I'm not sure what this is going to stitch, to tell you the truth. Um, it might be more definition in flowers. I'm not sure. Um, Right now we are doing a lot of the detail work of the bee. And again, this is the color we're switching to. And it had it in on my color list when it shows up in the machine. Again, it is a really dark brown. So again, that is why I selected this one. Okay. And I am glad that I went with the fabric that I did because I think the legs would have disappeared into the stitch out into the black fabric. Okay, and I just pull my loop through. Um, I have said in other videos that my thread, um, automatic threader doesn't work all the time. And I think it has a lot to depend, um, or it 
has a lot to do with the needles, the brand that I'm using. And I think this one is a Schmetz needle and it works great with the Schmetz needles. And I also got a brand from, um, shoot. I think I bought them online or I bought them at Hobby Lobby and they seem to do really well, really well, really good as well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start this stitch out. It says it's only gonna take two minutes. So that's really leading me to believe that it's going to be a lot of the definition that are on these other flowers. So let's go ahead and start. Stop it and clip that. Okay, yes, it is a lot of the definition of the flowers. And while that's stitching, I'm going to tell you guys something that happened while um, I was taking a little break uh, and not filming while some of the stitch out was occurring. That while it was stitching, um, my security alarm went out, went off. And not my security alarm, but my, my um, cameras. And it said that there was somebody out in my front yard. And we live in a neighborhood, but um, we're kind of like on a loop. So we get a lot of traffic in the front of our house, but not to where somebody, that, where it's detecting a person in our yard. So I looked at the video and it showed my neighbor walking past my driveway, walking the middle of my yard up to his house at one o'clock in the morning. And I don't know if he went to go check his mailbox or what he did, but let me tell you, you don't walk in somebody's yard at two, at, at like at whether it's, you know, midnight or one o'clock or whatever. You just, that, you just don't do that. Okay, so right now, for some reason, um, this is the only color it is, you can see where right here, where it's starting to shred a little bit. So I'm gonna pull this through. I'm going to cut that portion right here. And I'm going to cut down here. And I am going to re-thread the needle because it is telling me to check my needle thread. And I'm gonna go ahead and re-thread. And sometimes this will happen when there is a lot of detail um, in such a small area. And this is the flower center and it does show some of the center of the flower being indented. So there is a lot of stitching in that center part. Okay, so I'm gonna just back up a couple stitches so this will lock in place. Come on. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna raise the needle and re-thread because I threaded the machine with the, the needle lowered. And um, my machine gets really picky about that. Okay. There we go. Anyway, what I was saying is that I don't care if you're friends with your neighbors, if you're, you know, you, you're, you get, get along with them, whatever. And this particular person um, has never said a word to us. Um, we've waved to him, everything, and he's been there for a little over a year now. Maybe not even a year. But this man is really inconsiderate with his dog barking, and we just can't get away from do neighbors with dogs. But, um which is fine, you know, that's fine. It's just that if you're gonna have a pet, be considerate. But anyway, um, you don't walk through somebody's yard at one o'clock in the morning when you know they have security system. 
it's just ridiculous. Okay, anyway, give me just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. I was about to have a really bad coughing fit. So I paused the video. Okay, so I am going to go back a few steps. One, two, three, four, five, six. I usually go back seven to ten. So I, that's ten. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to restitch this portion. Hopefully the thread will not break again. Okay, that's good. Okay, so let me cut these thread tails. And one. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about a neighbor that knows you have security system, walks through your yard at one o'clock in the morning? And I mean, it doesn't matter that I'm awake. It doesn't. He sees lights on in the house, obviously. But why do you, why would you do that? Why would you do that to intentionally set somebody's cameras off and walk straight through the middle of your front yard because you don't want to walk the four or five extra steps to get past my yard and walk through your own? And I know that might seem a little petty, but the idea of it is, is you walked through my yard and set my alarm, my, my cameras off. I mean, you know, you know I got cameras because every time your dog runs through your through our yard, um, they go off. The security lights go off. Oh, anyway, okay. Enough of that. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's let's continue. Clip that, and this is going to be one minute of stitching. That was it for that color. Um, color change 17 will be this color again. So, um, and it's just, you know, it's it doesn't show a lot. I was worried about such a dark brown color. Oops, sorry about that. About where it would be located and if it was going to stitch a lot out. But it's actually just detail in the B. Okay, our next color is going to be black. So I am going to thread that. This next color is going to take about 10 to 12 minutes to stitch out. And I will be back when that's finished. Okay. There is the 16th, I'm sorry, the 15th color, and it's finished doing this portion of the B here. I'm going to go ahead and again switch to the chestnut color. Um, that, if you remember correctly, that was our sixth color we introduced, and... I'm telling you guys, I am absolutely loving the way this has stitched out. And I am praying that the last few color changes continue well. Um, I am again going to check my bobbin thread because um, I am really worried about it running out. <laughs> um, let me just check again. Again, really quickly um, let's see I still think I can complete it um, we may be playing a bobbin thread chase here at the very end and hopefully I won't have to stop and change the bobbin okay so that's what it's looking like so far you can see all the nice definition that I was talking about in the wings 
Um, this portion is a little bit harder to see, um, but you can kind of see a slight color differentiation there. I am really loving how it's turning out. I'm going to go ahead and put the hoop back in. And we are switching to color 16 now. And let me mark off on my list. I am actually marking off each. You can see there. I was just looking at my at my camera to make sure it was turning on. Sorry there about the little hesitation. Um, I usually have my TV playing while I film. So I can see exactly what you guys are seeing. But um, after a couple minutes of inactivity, it automatically shuts itself off. And Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I looked over and I'm like, something seems wrong. And I'm used to seeing that over there. And I will look from what I'm filming at the TV to make sure that I'm in frame. And sometimes I'm not always in frame. But, oops, sorry. That does help. Okay. Now we are... Changing the color. And again, I think this is just going to be some more detail. But truthfully, guys, we are almost done with this. We are at 18,330 stitches. And there was a total of 22,000, I'm sorry, 21,791. Um, I could have swore. Yeah, it does say on the actual um, printout that there's supposed to be 22,016 stitches. But um, on the pattern, on the stitch out itself on screen... It says there's only 21,791. So a little bit less. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start this. This color um, says it's going to take eight minutes. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a lot more detail. So again, when that is completed, I will come back. Okay, guys, I made a little mistake here. I am going to stop. Um... And this flower is actually going to be stitched out in this chestnut color. And it's a large flower. And I'm going to um, cut the thread because I actually did the wrong color. I'm supposed to be actually using... Oh, it does say chestnut. Okay. Um, this is color number 16. Which is supposed to be, okay, I was not wrong, um, is the khaki green. And I am going to stop the stitching. And I am going to stitch right over the top of this. So I'm hoping it will be okay. Um, I jumped ahead one color. And sometimes I do little things <laughs> like that when I'm talking and not paying attention. So I usually off camera have a lot of little notes off to the side to remind me to do things. Okay, so this is the color that I should be using right now and it is that khaki green um, very first color we used. I still do not understand why they call it green um, because in the pattern, excuse me, when you look at the, um, when you look at the photo of the design, it's not green. It's it's like a a really kind of like a 
pale mustard maybe? I don't even know if that's the right name for it. If you guys are familiar with um, Royal Threads, um, do they have odd nut names for their colors? I don't know. This is getting all messed up here. Let me... Because <laughs> this thing, the color's not green. It's just not green. And I matched the color the closest as I could. I could have used a really super bright yellow. I did not want to do that. And wouldn't you know it, my freaking needle threader here is not wanting to cooperate. Maybe the machine is needing a little break as well. So we're going to get this loop. Get up there. Come on, cooperate, please. We're almost done, I promise. <laughs> We don't have that much left to go. So let's pop you back in there. And when you have a little issue like I just did, you can go back to the last color. It will take you to the ending of the last color and then you can just hit that color again that it was originally supposed to be. And I, you can kind of see the flower back here in the background and I'm just going to stitch right over the top of that and hope for the best. Okay, I'm going to stop it and clip this. So far, it looks like it's fine. Okay, the stitch out is going to take eight minutes, so um, it is stitching out over the top of that mistake, uh, the color mistake, no problem. I'm gonna pause and I will be right back when this color's complete. Okay, there we go. There is the finished stitch out of that last color. That was color 16. Now we're going to switch to number 17, which is the chestnut color. And that will be stitching some definition in these flowers here. Um, this one here, this one, and these here. It is going to, um, I believe, just fill in the definition of those flowers. And gonna go ahead and pop that one on and I've got I've been looking for the little pieces of tape that I stick on my thread spools when I switch color so my thread doesn't have unravel and um, I just found them they were all stuck to the bottom of my shirt <coughs> I don't know how they got to the shirt when I had them stuck to my camera mount off to the left side or I'm sorry, to the right side of me. That was kind of funny. I have to make sure I keep pieces of masking tape either covered by the netting or um, out of view of Luna because she is a crazy cat and she loves to eat masking tape. I don't know what it is about tape that she just absolutely loves it. Okay, now this thread um, stitch out is going to take one minute. I'm going to just go ahead and leave the camera going. Pause, clip, oh, can't clip that, too close. Hopefully I don't have a problem with this. We have two more colors after this and I am really hoping that we won't have to change the bobbin. I think we're gonna be really lucky. Okay. So definitely stitching out some definition around these flowers. OK, 
Okay. That is that color. What we're going to go ahead and do uh, uh, is change now to the walnut color, which was, let me find it, which is this other shade of darker brown. And then we will just have one more color change and this B will be complete. I am really, really happy with the way it has stitched out so far. I will give you a close-up um, at the closing of the video. So definitely stay tuned for that if you want to see um, a close-up of it. This next color change says it's going to take only a minute. So in between... Oops, I'm sorry, we're threading the machine. I'm gonna just go ahead and keep it going. And we will break when I do the camera switch up. Okay, my machine's getting temperamental or I'm getting excited and I'm kind of rushing now because I I really want to see the final. Okay, so we are. Come on. Come on, gently. There we go. No, it's not wanting to thread. So I need to pull this out. Sometimes it does that. Um, and especially if I get excited, I uh, kind of rush it and I don't pay attention to where the thread is, where the, where the needle's going into the thread. Sorry, that didn't make any sense. Where the needle threader is going through the eye of the needle. Oh my gosh. Okay, slow down. Take a deep breath. And it is to the side of it. There we go. Okay. So we started filming this video at quarter to 11 with all the breaks and adjusting the camera and taking a little break to step aside for a couple minutes. It is now going on, you can see, about 2.30. So that'll give you an idea with some breaks in between. And of course, you're probably not going to be filming it. So, um, you know, you can you can expect uh, with the, all the color changes and things like that, that it is going to take a little bit of time to stitch out. Okay, this one is going to take one minute. I'm going to pause there. Um, let's try to get the right thread without cutting the other one. Okay, this is doing some definition in the petals of the flower. That is it. Now we're gonna switch to the very last color. Um, let's make sure that's up. Remove the thread. And our last color is the brown. And I, um, is it brown? Yes, it is brown. And my brown color is the, let me show you just a moment. I'm getting this other thread wound up and I just put a piece of tape on it and then put the net back over the top of the tape. And that's the way I store them. And this is our last color, which they're saying um, brown 
and um, this is what I used for my brown color because in the machine the colors that I am trying to match it as close as possible to the color that it says um, in the machine um, the little um, color square it gives I am so excited the way this is looking okay that one threaded really well get in there enough to grab I am going to cut um, one thread here before I progress because I don't want to stitch over it And this is another thing that takes time when you're doing um, machine embroidery, um, trimming your threads. And um, I'm really hoping to invest in a multi-needle machine within the next couple months. Okay, so, okay. Last color is gonna take one minute. Let's go to it. <laughs> I'm going to cut this and this is just a little bit more definition between the um, the stripes of the bee you can see that stitching there okay um, that wasn't even one minute that was just I don't know why I even had to stitch out that little bit because that was ridiculous I think what did it what did it stitch four or five stitches and that was it Okay, my machine is saying embroidery is finished, so I'm going to wind up this last spool of thread. I will pause the camera, adjust the camera, and uh, to the overhead view, and we will be back in just a couple minutes. Okay, so I got the camera adjusted. We are going to set that aside. I am going to remove the hoop from the machine. Make sure needle's up. And that is what the back of it looks like. I am going to take the basting stitch out, and which is usually very easy. Um, if you, I'm gonna see down if I don't run over little Luna she is sitting here on the floor next to my chair and I'm gonna try not to run over her little tail so to remove your basting stitch I'm going to just get my little El Cheapo thread ripper and I just every four or five stitches I just pop the stitch on the back and I will show you how easy it is from the front to remove that. I like to do the corners because sometimes they are reinforced in a corner like this one was knotted in the corner and I'm just going to cut the knot so the whole thing comes out. I'm going to move my little trash can here. Okay. So to remove that, all I do, I flip it back over, I grab that, and I just kind of bounce it. You just kind of bounce the, and you can see how easy that came out. And you just pull off the thread. And some people will ask about, what about the holes that are showing around the edge. Now usually I don't worry about them and the reason why I don't worry about them let me take these pins out and if you remember I put the pins in so the stabilizer stayed with the 
cutaway stable or <laughs> I put the pin so the batting stayed with the stabilizer and didn't bunch up underneath while we were doing the actual stitching and everything looks really good very very um, I don't see a lot of puckering which I am so thrilled about I'm loosening my hoop so I can pop this off and um, if you're curious about what hoop I used um, I do a video on this hoop and this is the FAF creative all fabric hoop and it had the inner hoop in two different um, sizes one was for a light hooping and one was for a heavier hooping. And since I had this already out because I was using it to quilt the baby quilt box, um, I wanted to see if it would fit for this small bee. And folks, let me tell you, I am so absolutely thrilled with the stitching of this bee. Um, in a minute, I'm gonna just stand up and I will show you um, what it looks like. And I will have to clip a couple little threads. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look how pretty that turned out. Um, I'm really hoping you guys can see this okay. I know the lighting's a little weird, but that is what the final result of the small B. I'm so happy with it. Oh, wow. Okay. So as you know, I stitched this one out as my test stitch out, like I was telling you at the beginning of the video. And I am so happy with this that I am actually going to be able to use this in the quilt. Um, I do like the size of the block, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame it in black or possibly even one of the um, other fabrics. I was going to do a quilted background to it, and I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to go ahead and frame it in black so it pops a little more when you see the yellow in the center. And when we get to assembling the quilt, we'll, um, I'll show you that a little bit more. But folks, that's it. That is the first embroidery bee of the bumblebee quilt. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And please stay tuned for the next video. It may be a few days before I get to one because I will be working on the baby quilt and I do have some other things um, off YouTube that I have to work on. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, I'm, I am really so happy with the way you guys have been subscribing and I really appreciate each and every one of you. So we will see you in the next video. Thanks everybody. Bye.